In just one movement, we are shown exactly what type of world Night City is. V's bruised knuckles versus her jack in slot. And we get some visual backstory to what type of person V is. Local guy. You really think somebody local tried to mug me, Pepe? And also, adding to that backstory, we get to find out that V is already established in this district, making us feel empowered right off the bat, unlike starting as a lowly criminal prisoner. Talk you up. What, he too shot a hand over the Yetis itself? Kirk's big boy sits in after you in the booth, making the player feel trapped into this conversation and placing the control firmly in Kirk's hand. Two, Mayor Ryan. Three, a red- Not even magazines are safe from the technological development of 2077. A skeleton key for all Rayfields in the city. Not even five minutes in, we're set up for a heist on one of the most expensive cars in the game from one of the biggest companies in the game. Sebastian Ibarra. Looks like it. Moments like these happened all the time in Cyberpunk. This dude never shows up again in main jobs, but this opens the door to side jobs from Padre and makes the world feel more alive. Another will come in this place. He pulled iron on you. Iron, biz, preem, choom. The slang for Night City is so much fun. It adds so much history to the world. I don't know how practical screens for windows are, but who am I to deny how cool it is nonetheless? Uh. V gets two broken noses in less than a day. She's tough. Even Kabuki under the counter magic can't get around an alarm like that. I know you. You hang at the Coyote. This reminds me of the opening of Star Wars. There's no hand holding on the introduction of these people or places. They just throw them out there and expect the players to keep up, which is a good thing. Games too often baby players into their games to the point of it being boring. Just like that? You put a barrel to my skull not so long ago. V, didn't you know pointing a gun at someone's head is the fastest icebreaker Night City has? As much as I'd want to play through some of these segments in this montage, it's a quick and effective way of growing V and Jackie's relationship. When am I not nice? Um, always. I'm always never not nice. <laughs> Could have just said, I'm always nice. Doesn't look like your average boss. No due process in Night City, it seems. If you're f***ing shit up, you're gonna die. For all of you complaining about the way V sleeps in her bed, you gotta think. She's been out hustling all day. Girl just wants to get some shut-eye. Time you got up. I think I might have caught something. Fun that catching something nowadays is a code-based virus and not a biological one. The entire whole of Night City might just be the best city I've ever seen in a game. It's so wonderfully realized and draws you in. Getting immersed has never been easier. Badass black Jesus of the afterlife. <laughs> so what's the gig? We meant to come out in one piece? Well, our savior wants to tell you everything himself. Really sticking with that Jesus analogy, aren't you? Hey V, Dr. Vector will see you now. Mr. Gray will see you now. Sorry, I have to, every time. Name's Dexter Deshaun. Known quantity from the afterlife. Keep your guard up, that's all. Should have listened to Vic. Seems to always be right. Need some new kit, but tools, not toys, Vic. Time I bumped up my sights and got a grip. Implies that a younger V might have come to the Ripper just to mess around with some cyberware. Quit crying, Vic. I'll bring you the Eddies later, with interest. You know I will. Hmm, last time. Everyone deserves a doc like Vic. I expected this Ripper doc to be one of the dingier ones of Night City, but no. They really are just a chair in a room in the dock. So either antibiotics are great in 2077 or people don't give a fuck. We'll work something out. Right now, I'm just out to make sure you get back in one piece. Eddie's in hand. As much as Vic is a bro, he still gotta make his Eddie's. A bit of anesthetic and I can start cutting. Vic's gun is some heavy hardware as these marks never leave V's arm. I love cyberware. I never played Deus Ex or Detroit, but being able to modify oneself like this is something I'm kind of hoping to see in my lifetime. Now draw your weapon. You should see your ammo count in a brand new sight. This HUD is diegetic, and I didn't even notice until Vic points out the ammo counter. It's not there in the first mission with Jackie. But you'd have to watch out for negative energy fields and avoid mean reds. V, and yo, listen up. I'm right there with you, Jack. You wouldn't want to finish my spirit reading either. That knew it wasn't easy. Some brothers from Pacifica got back to me. Told me to stop looking. In the convo. <laughs> we'll learn later that the Voodoo Boys didn't want Dex looking into Evelyn because of their original plan to steal the biochip for themselves. And they didn't want Dex involved. Which can be interpreted as another red flag for Dex being untrustworthy. What's the issue needs resolving with Maelstrom? Got a beef? Slot in the shark. Everyone's phones are just inside their heads now, which feels like the natural progression of things. Apple's removed the headphone jack. We all know the port is next. How long until they get rid of the phone itself? One Meredith Stout of Militech has developed an interest in said convoy. 
Who's a prima donna? Glad to know that the term prima donna is still being used 57 years later. Of course, to do so, you'll need that frazzled cat's info. Sending it now. This happens all the time, but the characters' eyes glow when they're accessing their phones, so it's not in your head. It's just a super small projection right in front of your eye. One more thing, this V. Quiet life or blaze of glory. These two options Dex mentions are the two camps that each of the endings fall into. The game making you walk the same pace as who you're following is a godsend for us PC players. The Maelstrom symbol is that of a spider, and it seems that a lot of the boys have had augmentations to give themselves multiple eyes. Wonder if it's an initiation type of thing. Escape, pure as baby powder. I'm getting big war boy vibes from Dum Dum though. Look at Cheeky Royce in the background just waiting and watching. Oh my god, <laughs> no, he ain't dead. No, he's alive, well, and kicking. Damn, y'all, that was saucy as hell. Uh -huh. That meat's the only thing that'll get you a chance at grabbing that chip. Does Dex call Evelyn a piece of meat because she used to work at Clouds, or because he's a piece of sh**? Uh, why not both? Actually, it doesn't seem much like your thing, this place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Evelyn's reaction here. Little hint to her past. The chip is tucked away inside Compeki Plaza. Oh, the decor's to die for. Is she talking about f***ing your Nobu, or how nice the plaza is, or maybe she's foreshadowing that she won't survive the game's runtime, who knows? How about it, V? Raw brain dance. Ever taken a dip before? Brain dance is like taking VR to a whole new level. Everything in 2077 seems super attainable by us in the future. I love it. It's too bad most of the BDs we do here are only good for flogging the law. Flogging the log? Why haven't I heard that one yet? <laughs> you look like a cut of meat, are you? Evelyn. Jesus, walking face to face with Adam Smasher has gotta be a brown pants type of situation. Visual this old gray beard who thinks nothing will change and he'll live forever. Well, Yuri, he's right in the end. The BD will be the death of us. Maybe not of us, but at least of Evelyn. So. Death shadowing. Place used to be a morgue. You believe that? A bar in a morgue that serves up dead people's signature drinks named the afterlife. That's some great marketing right there. Name's Jackie Wells. Shot of vodka on the rocks, lime juice, ginger beer. Oh, and most importantly, a splash of love. Wrote your name in the death note with that one, Jackie. Better f believe I will. I see no reason why you should be using expletives. Delamain has got to be one of my favorite side characters. I always love a super dry, matter-of-fact character. Everything in 2077 really just feels like everything Elon Musk is doing right now, after it starts working. Isometric Air. Easily my favorite track of the entire game. Delamain, initiate combat mode. Jesus, Jackie, you're such a goofball. Trying to enter combat mode on a peaceful street. The greatest crimes issue from a desire for excess and not from necessity. Speaking of the excess that T-Bug just mentioned, check out these Arasaka employees. Simplicity is sometimes toughest to master. Amen to that. I don't condone murder, but I don't blame Yorinobu for killing his father. Saburu has big Tywin Lannister energy, only caring about Arasaka above all else, never truly loving his son. And also, Saburu wanted to kill Yorinobu, so like, what goes around comes around. No normal person would be able to survive this, so cyberware is pretty great, isn't it? Jackie doesn't even think twice about protecting the bioship. He probably knows this is his last ride and wants to help V finish the mission. Not bad. Client feedback noted. <laughs> Tell him me now. The saddest part about this scene is hindsight. The relic was keeping Jackie alive this whole time. Notice the instant he pulls it out, he dies. Yes, that's because of the whole construct being entangled with the host and all that jazz, but he would have succumbed to his wounds anyway. Jackie could have survived if only we had known. Rest in peace, Jackie. We only knew you for a little bit, but everyone loved you. Glory for me. Notice the blue coloring after being shot. Johnny Silverhand coming in to save our skin. This is where the game truly begins. It's a long-winded prologue, but does a great job about setting so much up at the world. Johnny gets his own HUD, and we finally get to see the Reeves. This gun is badass and awesome that we can get it in the main game. 
Adam Smasher is eating bullets from Johnny's badass gun before he became 96% cybernetic. Dude needs a drink in the afterlife. So let's you and me figure this <laughs> Takamura killing Dex is good first step in gaining our trust. Pick me up. Of course. See, Delamain is the homie, coming to pick up V outside of the service area. Silverhand's construct is overriding your consciousness, gradually taking over your body until one day you'll just be gone. Sure, Cyberpunk stole the plot from Arkham Knight, but who cares? I love that Johnny gets to be around all the time and make comments on whatever's happening. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland. Who you work for, start talking! I don't hate Keanu's performance here. Everyone has been saying that he feels flat and bored the whole time, but that's just Keanu for you, and I really like him as Johnny. Probably the best part of the game for me and many others. You do not look so bad. Compliments. I too possess this slyness you speak of. Takamura immediately speaking that he too possesses this slyness lends us to believe that he is more than just some corporal rat. Him defending himself makes him come off as insecure and, in turn, more human. What, we stroll into Arasaka HQ and announce that you're a Nobu's akin killer? That he murdered Saburo? Yep, that's exactly what's going to happen. Hey, I was listening to that. Shut up. What did you say? Finish your tea and get the f*** out. It's fun watching a nice corporal not get his way and throw a fit. And if that means picking another fight with Arasaka, so be it. Either V doesn't care about fighting the biggest corporation in the world, or it's Johnny and her already becoming one and the same. A cherry blossom is placed outside this diner, where V has her first conversation with her savior and first real conversation with Johnny, also her savior. The cherry blossom in Japanese culture is representative of the fleeting nature of life, but also of renewal and future happiness, all of which rests in the outcomes of the tasks discussed with Takamura. You know you don't gotta speak out loud to talk to me. V not having to speak out loud to talk to Johnny was the correct move a thousand times over. Opens the door to having banter with Johnny whenever. Way back when you weren't even an itch in your daddy's ball sack. <laughs> but don't quit if you feel uncomfortable. You could miss out on something truly remarkable. Sounds like they're about to make V take acid. Personal profile. You should see compatible. You know, I don't think I expected any less from a place like Clouds. V gets a male or female option. Could be the devs just wanting us to have our pick, but I like to think the two options appear because there are two consciousnesses jacking in. You fear this. Cower before it. So what if I do? I feel like right now might be a good time to mention that you aren't V, in the sense that you are the dragonborn in Skyrim. V is still her own person with her own backstory. All we do as the player is choose which V we experience, and maybe that could be said about a lot of RPGs, but here it doesn't feel so open-ended, and I like that. You must see the big picture. You focus too much on details, minor ones, like Evelyn. Angel's speaking to the two minds inside of V's head throughout this scene. Like here, V is just worried about surviving while Johnny still wants to change the world. There are many times where the things Angel says could be applied to both V and Johnny. You wish to be remembered. Wanted to reach the top. Be someone. Still do. This might just be my favorite scene in the entire game. It really captivated me. Most likely because it feels that this is the most vulnerable we get to see V. And on top of that, forcing her to confront the themes of the game, which I will get into later. Things are moving way too fast. Around me. And also, something I've always thought about is anything you experience, Johnny does as well. So like, those romance scenes? In a way, it's always a threesome, no? I'll move on. Same heart-shaped ass. Behavioral chip will do the rest. Won't feel any difference. We're running a skin circus here, in case you haven't noticed. CDPR pulls no punches with making Woodman so hateable. Even before taking a look into his laptop, he's awful. And once taken a gander, this dude deserved worse than this quick death. A ripper named Fingers in a back alley for hookers. Sounds like a Joy Toy's wet dream. A creepy ripper named Fingers. Ugh. No need to go so OTT. I've got other methods. And he really does. Johnny tried music first. Wanted me dead. Said so yourself. Made it pretty clear since that I changed my mind. The relationship built with Johnny throughout feels really earned. It starts on rocky ground from go, but you can really build it up one way or the other, and it doesn't feel like one type of relationship was favored over the other. You can watch those juicy lips of yours flap for hours, days. <laughs> I f***ing hate fingers, so good on CDPR for making a good creep, I guess. Two for two in that department. 
Backstory for all of our characters are wonderfully done throughout the game in their character design. Example, these four scratchers on Finger's face. Obviously, a woman clawed him for doing what he does best. Either you put a muzzle on this creature, or put her down. That's a real roundabout way of calling Judy a bitch. What's this have to do with Johnny Silverhand? V, you got any idea? Judy asks while Johnny enjoys his cigarette in the background. Well, that's Pacifica for you. Nobody flinches when a dude is just shooting in the air. Well, at least he's not likely to talk your ears bloody. Silver lining, Silverhand. He's not all we. You could say... doesn't know the way. Your chrome shaman, it is Victor. Chrome shaman. Fun. Got a bullet to the brain. Hasn't worked since, that's how. Hmm. <laughs> doesn't even blink at her taking a bullet to the brain. You are, you are my vessel now. now. Agwe is a spirit of Haitian voodoo and is the ruler of the sea, plants, and fish. So the voodoo boys naming their system of being a passenger in someone's body Agwe is a neat nod to their culture. And all of the other stuff in there. Them being the voodoo boys living in Pacifica, of course the Haitian roots all throughout. Seems CDPR really did their homework when developing this section of the world. Don't trust someone? Just hack their brain and see and listen to everything they do as if you were them. A woman named Sasquatch is leading a game called The Animals. Kind of on the nose, but I'm a sucker for fun naming schemes. Doom. Well, now we can talk in private. Cowboys in the background where we have a standoff with this Bryce. Or CDPR through the movie up there because Placide is kind of riding us like a horse? I don't know. I thought you dead. Not sure if the voodoo boys just messed up or if Johnny saved our life again. I'm gonna go with the latter, as that makes the most sense, and hey, Johnny's saving us again. Placide, he is. Nyon bête de bas. Vieux et courant. Cyberware seems to translate things on the fly, except for when it doesn't want to. Seems like Cyberware took a page out of the Animus' book. <laughs> Taking liquid cooling to a whole new level. Not just today. How is it subtlety goes so far over your head? Weird for an artist. Yeah, have you seen some of the artists nowadays? Not that surprising. Johnny named his band Samurai, juxtaposing his ideals about Arasaka. He tried to go about tearing down Arasaka in a noble, non-violent way of creating music. But don't forget Samurai were warriors as well. And, I mean, we know what Johnny did with those nukes. Like I said, I'm a sucker for naming schemes, especially when the name carries so much symbolism for which it's representing. And for this case with Johnny and his band Samurai is a lot. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's a Sphinx cat. And those cats are generally related to abundance and wealth. And it was the most wealthy corporation that just jumped him. And also, Johnny should have been dead many times in this story. Guess you could say he has nine lives. I'm getting some real no Russian vibes right now. Let me try. I'm surprised that Johnny wasn't able to open this door here, as later Alt explains that the events V sees are Johnny's heightened versions, but but that explains his more one-man army moments. That she was a captive in the Arasaka subnet. So, what did you do? Got my hands on two thermonuclear charges. Johnny wanting to blow up Arasaka for Alt is much more compelling than being an idealist. Alt, this is V. You need to save her life. I see this. But why is it my problem? Yeah, being an immortal god, basically, that's the same thing. Death by becoming someone else. You didn't do anything to deserve that fate. The first time Johnny seems to show some sympathy towards V. Okay, I'll tell you why I want to destroy Arasaka. I saw a corpse strip farmers of water, and eventually of land. Saw them transform Night City into a machine fueled by people's crushed spirits. Wow, I was expecting a funny punchline, but he actually gets into it. Broken dreams and empty pockets. <laughs> I bet someone has made that the new slogan for the release of this game. If I need your body, I'll f take it. The two tapeworm sections are in the top three for best scenes of the game, as Johnny's the most interesting aspect of the main story script. Rogue has got to be like 80 years old. I guess that's what Cyberware can do for you. Is that a problem? For me, no. Not at all. I mean, there's no accounting for taste. It's a little strange that V gets comfortable so quick to pen M, but I'm here for it. Can't leave camp. No chance. But, but Saul never said a thing about gear. Using a loophole to help your buddy. So it was about vengeance. 
The whole time. The hell you know about me? Yeah, Pan Am, I've learned a thing or two about revenge from other games. Might want to sit this one out. I might be able to help you. Help me? I take my cut up front, honey. I can see now why she's the queen of fixers in Night City. In the city, you might just get a cybernetic leg, but out here, money's tight. You gotta go with what you can afford. Another one over here. We're the wrench. The cutter is the AV. I appreciate the attempt at a visual, even if it's completely useless. And now, Pan Am, here's Johnny. Why does that remind me of something shiny? If it's something advanced... Don't worry. Nothing too advanced. Pretty backwards, actually. Real f***ing funny. <laughs> You're starting to remind me of me. Minus the charisma. An impressive car. You'd be surprised, Johnny. CDPR really lets us get into customizing RV. How you approach things. That's the trick. Minus the AAA. Assessment. Assembly. Action. Pen M should do a TED talk on her AAA idea. Bullseye! Electronics are down! Yeah, all the Kalos first reaction is to go help the AV, even if it's obviously corporates. Pan Am! But only if you remember the cowboy. Pan Am! Some nice history building between these two. This swift takedown could only happen if they'd done things like this in the past. Go. I'll call the crew. Get all this cleaned up. We'll Mitch's gun likes to jam, kind of like Mitch's relationship with Pan Am. We'll It'll come through in the end, even if there's some resistance, and eventually be fixed. Just remember, you have Hellman, and that's one hell of a card. Try to win something with it. Love how straight Johnny's head is on. Saul. Everything's done here. All clear. It's all good, man. Unbelievable. It looks like... Hellman doesn't move his mouth to speak to us after jacking in. Doesn't need to. I love the blocking here as it feels like we've got an angel and a devil on our shoulder and it can be a little blurry on which is which. He already tried to take over your body. You know, just for a little while. No. Would you though? Could be fun. Johnny! <laughs> we get a quick flash of Saburo while downloading the blueprints. Neat little foreshadowing to what happens with them. This couple in front of V feels similar to what her and Johnny are going through right now. Hanako Arasaka's from the carrier at Anchor in the Bay. Saburo's daughter. Thanks for reminding the audience who Hanako is. By God, huh? A good sign. He is usually camouflaged. Boss fight mechanics shadowing. I do you a favor now by not cutting it off and taking it straight to your Inabu Sama. Be very careful, my friend. We are all so far from home. Even with Oda's threats, Takamura's honor still holds. I apologize. That, that came, came off wrong. wrong. This might be a glitch, but we are shown many times that Takamura is like an old dad when it comes to technology. If I could just get onto Hanako-sama's float. Get there how? Why jump? Of course. This man always plays it so straight and then throws out something like this. One. We break into Arasaka Industrial Park. One and a half. <laughs> Why one and a half? Why not lump it in with one or make it two? The more quiet, the better. But you are the thief. I will not question your skills. In other words, you can run in and shoot everyone in the face. Ate what you call a Scott Boomer. Tasty? Ask the people below. I love Goro, but he's still a suit. Doesn't care much for these people. This shot is beautiful. Feels like it's ripped straight from a trailer. Haha, ha, there literally floats. Man. This entire mission is awesome, and right here is gorgeous. Damn, would it be awesome to live in this world. Minus all the murder and stuff. Damn, Goro, I didn't know you had hands like that. I offered her some tea. You kidnap Hanako Arasaka and offer her a cup of tea? Yes, she respectfully declined. <laughs> this game is actually really funny. Hanako moves the cigarette away after proxying in. She probably doesn't like them, and it's little actions like this that make our characters feel real. Want to know everything you know about Makoshi? A Makoshi is a vehicle used in Japan to transport a deity between a temporary shrine and a main shrine. I bet Saburo was the one that named it, knowing that he feels like a god among men. Let us meet in person at Embers in the city center. It is discreet. Her discreet place is like the center of the city. 
I guess for a corp, that's about as discreet as they can get. I will do you no wrong. When the time comes, it'll be my life for yours. I'll agree to get white. Johnny's come a long way from when we first met him. I looked up and down for some reason that this mission would be named Nocturne's OP55N1 and couldn't find anything past Hanako's playing it as we walk in. Maybe it's that it's near the end of the list of Nocturnes, but that feels like a stretch, even for me. Damn, does Johnny just want to choke the sh** out of this bitch. Showing you what it's like to feel trapped. Now this porcelain is gonna use you in her fancy scheme. At the moment, I thought Johnny had no idea what he's talking about, but after playing through the ending I got, damn, could he not have been more right. You missed the hell of a fright. Then you shoved my patient at the time off the table. Yeah, that sounds like something Johnny would do. Now, see that setup over there? You'll find something there that'll help you end this on your own terms. He's talking about the pills, but Johnny's standing right there, and he can also help us end this on our own terms. Got a feeling you're gonna regret this decision. Yeah, he ended up being so right. You, me, and Hellman makes three. Actually, two and a half. Who's the half? There's an argument for all three, but I'm gonna go with V if you don't like half a person after stamping out Johnny. You want me to stare at them? Weapon at the ready. And if my charms don't work, we go for more tried and tested methods. Interestingly, that both of the Arasaka children are planning to take over by force. That is the way he is meticulous, fastidious. Was. Her not saying was definitely tips the player off, especially coming off the heels of talking about the replicated office. Then, to finish the one-two punch, we're shown that Saburo is alive. I guess there is a mini jungle underground. Don't really understand why, but it's a vibe. Hear that? Plant your ass somewhere else. And to think we started to just some robber street kid. Saburo might be old, but he's not dead. Got him, Smasher. How about that, Johnny? That was for you. Damn straight that was for Johnny. Felt good to do one last thing for him after going through with the wrong decision. I looked around everywhere to see if there was any significance to this giant robe and couldn't find anything. So it just seems they wanted a dramatic shot. And it's pretty dramatic. You've lost. It is they who have lost. Yorinobu was actually right. It seems he knew what his father's plan was going to be. Sitting down at the same booth to share their last conversation where they did their first. That line that kept V and Silverhand separate, well, faded a while back. Makes you wonder how many of our dialogue choices were because of Johnny being in our heads. The principle, V. It's always about the principle. Johnny's sounding like a dad right now, but he's correct. But at the end of it all, it's the code you live by that defines who you are. We talking psychological code or cyber one? Remember what Dex asked you? Quiet life or blaze of glory? Shame you chose wrong. Even in this moment when I was playing, I felt like Johnny was in the wrong and it just makes my ending sting so much more. God, this ending was so well done. The construct has been cleared from all engrams. The madness is past. Now that Arasaka has no more need for Johnny, they just get to get rid of him. Another corporate win. I want out. Ugh, I hate that she doesn't respond. Can join twins. When yes. This and the doctor not responding to us is not boding well for the events that happen next. It appears his consciousness was used to override that of his son and heir, Yorunobu Arasaka. And if being stuck in an Arasaka space station wasn't enough, how about being a tool in the resurrection of Sabaru? Oh, yeah. And this unnatural it's color grid really adds to the disorienting, unreal feeling that this ending provides. This text on screen really makes me reflect on my life in conjunction with the choices I made in the game, and for me at least, Sometimes damn does this text ring true. Enemy. Arasaka. Principal. Me. Betrayal. Me. I love these one-word responses because it forces the player to reflect on the choices they made throughout the game that led them to this position. <laughs> and if being trapped in space and helping resurrect Saburo wasn't enough, let's remind the player what happened to Jackie. Semantics!
It was about 2 a.m. when I played this part, and it scared the shit out of me. As quickly as you can, without thinking about it. V. No. This quick cut montage really horrified me. It made me feel sick of the V I chose to be. It was brilliantly done. All is set forth in a contract, guaranteed therein. The contract entails relinquishing your rights. A contract that guarantees your life but has you relinquish your rights. Players got played by Arasaka with this ending. The thing of beauty will never fade away. V singing Never Fade Away, which is a samurai song that perfectly encompasses so many elements of this game. This is the first time we get to see V from a third person perspective, and waiting until the end to do it adds so much weight to our choice. I wish we got more of these because I spent so much time in creating my V. God, this ending made me so depressed. And that's a good thing. There are so many variants to these voicemails, and if the feelings you got from your ending wasn't enough, these voicemails are either going to kill you or make you feel all warm inside. Before the moon. The High Priestess. Those, uh, those are bad cards. Well, I'm the fool on a space station near the moon that was duped by a High Priestess. Go figure. Oh boy, was this game a victim of the hype train going off the rails. It didn't matter at all what CDPR did here. Cyberpunk could have been the second coming and we'd still have people disappointed. Partly CDPR's fault for being so good at what they do, but mostly ours. People have forgotten that 2077 was going to cap off last-gen consoles, not be the revolution of the RPG genre that so many were hyped for. Which I don't blame them for forgetting because I doubt there's anyone able to comfortably complete the game on base PS4 and Xbox. This game, like many others before it, is a great lesson in tempering expectations. It's always fun to be excited for something, but I'd personally take being pleasantly surprised than sadly disappointed any day. Expect the worst and hope for the best. That's how I live my life, at least. I didn't even know a lick about Cyberpunk until two weeks from release. Only then I decided to start following some of the marketing. So this conclusion comes from someone who experienced this game away from the zeitgeist that was Cyberpunk over these last seven years. So how's the game now that it's out? It's good. Great, even. The bugs don't diminish the experience, and that's all I'll say about that, as talking about them will just age this video. There really is no other open world like Night City in terms of presentation. From the instant you're free to roam, everywhere is so captivating. Whether you're driving around or walking through one of the markets, this world sucks you in and doesn't let go. Just like Night City with its inhabitants. I'd catch myself flung from my bike many times over because I'd be gazing at the cityscape. There's of course the standout use of color in the city, experience with ray tracing, and the picture is just next level. But on top of that, another aspect of this world is how vertical it is. Whether it's the towers from Arasaka looming over you or the tiered Kalum-like homes pancaked on top of each other, there's always something not just ahead, but above to stare at. Add in heavy NPC populations and you've got yourself a living, breathing world that feels more alive than my very own city. And yeah, I made sure to look at the trash, and it does look more than just an asset dumped on the ground, but it's still just trash. For all its looks though, Night City's not the nicest place. In Cyberpunk, you're going to mostly be using guns to defend yourself, sometimes melee weapons and less often cybernetics. At least on the surface, that's how the dominoes fall. When you dig into the meat and potatoes of the gameplay, there's actually quite a bit of diversity in build choice. Since you can't max out every single skill tree, you're encouraged to decide. Do I want to use blades or SMGs, be stealthy, or use my cyberware to my advantage? Or mix and match? I went for a simple pistol blade build and liked that a lot, but options of choice are great. The gunplay is serviceable and doesn't break any ground, but this is an RPG first. If you wanted brilliant shooting mechanics, go literally anywhere else. And remember, this is CDPR's first foray into first-person shooting. They have literally only made Witcher material in the past. So for a first shot, I'd say I'm happy. Same goes for the driving. Yeah, it kind of feels like I'm driving a hundred ton wet noodle, but just like the gameplay, it's serviceable. To some, that's not enough. To some, they believe that seven years should be in more than enough time to make these things better. And that's a sound argument, but we who haven't been on their side, the developer's side, can't judge too much. Maybe it should have been better regarding the time, but who am I to speak about that as I have never developed a game in my life. The gameplay works to have us experience what the game is, an RPG. And how are those elements? So I'm glad you asked. The RPG aspects are where this game truly shines. Even though not much changes based on your decisions, 
pre-point of no return mission, it's still a great time. You get to have a nice range of options to choose from in the dialogue and you aren't forced into things you don't want to do. If you are, it's because your V isn't skilled enough or doesn't have the proper information to unlock that dialogue choice. Which is why I feel this game shines as an RPG. The side missions, as all the others online have stated, are truly where the heart of this game lies. Yeah, the main mission is cool with Johnny, Pan Am, and the rest, but those main jobs are pretty hollow if you don't do a lick of the side content. Everything you do in 2077 feeds into the main narrative. You can be the V that makes no friends and then kills yourself in the end, or the one that buddies up with everyone and leaves with the Aldecaldos. And those are two wildly different outcomes to reach. There are five main endings to the game, and to reach each one will be decided by the amount of side content you complete. Cyberpunk's crutch is the relationships you build with all of the characters in Night City, and I urge you all to go out of your way and play those jobs. CDPR did a great job realizing each character to really make them something with weight. My favorite side character has got to be Delamain. The missions where you've got to get his taxis back have so many neat references, and it's fun to develop a relationship with an AI. I was actually sad when I couldn't retain all the rogue Delamains and keep Del's memories intact because I didn't have enough tech skill. But that's just how the cookie crumbles in this game, and I had to be okay with that. 2077 got me to care about an AI taxi driver. If that's not a testament to the character work here, then I don't know what is. And this might be a bold statement, but I feel like Johnny, Pan Am, and V are our main three characters. You correct me if I'm wrong, but besides Johnny and V, Pan Am has so much going on with her character. Hell, she gets an entire ending to herself. And Pan Am's just great, so here's to our girl. Simping aside, what does Cyberpunk have to say, if anything at all? Something you'd be surprised to find out is not much about our relationship with cybernetic technology. There's hints here and there about it, but I think 2077 knew that there were many other stories that have tackled that angle and wanted to shift the lens to something else. Instead of our relationship with cybernetics, what is our relationship with death? If you notice all throughout the main jobs, the three things that come up again and again are life, death, and legacy. I don't think Cyberpunk is trying to say something about humans and technology, no. It's about what humans will do when faced with death. Will they run from it, embrace it, or do their best to not be forgotten once they're gone? Saburo created a technology capable of keeping him alive forever. Evelyn decided that her life wasn't worth living anymore, and Johnny wanted to have an impact before he left this world. Funny thing though is that Johnny and Saburo both channel the three main themes of this game. As for V in particular, we get to decide for ourselves how we want to die. Because so far, there is no ending where V doesn't die eventually. And if you play RPGs like I do, which is choosing the honest answers as if me, Cameron, were the PC, then the ending you got could maybe shine some light on how you yourself handle death. If you think that's being a little too dramatic, that's fair. But Bioshock showed us games can be art. And I'll parrot this forever, good art makes you feel something. And in my opinion, great art can make you realize something about yourself. There's a YouTuber named Grant Vogel. He said after playing The Last of Us, he realized that he wanted a daughter. Yeah. So don't tell me that video games can't have a profound impact on someone because they can and have. I, I digress. Am I saying that this game is on that level? That now I want to create a second consciousness inside my head to banter around with? No. My point is that every experience we have in this life, something can be gleaned from it, big or small. Through playing Cyberpunk, I realized some small things about myself, all while having a kick-ass entertaining game to play. It's not perfect, nothing is, but it's a game that we all know was cared for, labored over, and will continue to be supported long after its release. Whether you finished it and came to watch this video to enjoy this game for what it is, or quit early because of disappointments drawn from your expectations. I ask, no matter which one you fall in, play through the game one more time. You might find that beyond your disappointments, there will be things you'll enjoy, and or experience 2077 with an even greater appreciation. Thank mm -hmm. you.